what we exactly what we did on our final class of the term. So the step over series from ha uh, from side control. Did you do you remember? Or? I don't. Okay. I don't. So I probably once I see it, I will. Yep. So this is the sequence we're talking about. I'm gonna kind of rush through this so we don't talk too much. So from side control, using the underhook, talked about pulling pulling up to the side and stepping over the head. And from here, uh, we went through a sequence of attacks. I'm just gonna show you guys here. So this utilizes the Kimura grip, and it's my, again, I use this a lot, even though 90% of the time I just use it for the arm bar. The important part of the Kimura transition we talked about is again, creating a closed circuit. So I'm gonna take my hand and tuck it underneath my armpit. Take my other hand, tuck it underneath my other armpit to secure this arm. So I replace, initially the underhook is controlling the arm. I replace that arm. My underhook comes out and I capture the Kimura, keeping it tight to my chest. Okay, and most of the time, again, I did this in that competition, right at some base, I had the Kimura grip. I turned the corner and I came here looking for the arm lock. Talked about the other options that I play with more so in the gym. So finishing the Kimura, and we talked about pulling up, right, breaking that grip and just turning, rotating, go for the Kimura. We also talked about uh, the head scissor. All right, this is one that I'm very loath to use, but it, it is very effective, crude but effective. Uh, we talked about the importance of extending the legs rather than trying to squeeze the knees. So I cross my feet, I extend, like so. And our reset point was this. Right, taking the top leg over the armpit, kicking hard, and driving my hip back over the top. At this point, we can either look for side control Kimura, or I can look to reset my opponent. So that was what we covered in our last class, we did get through all of that. Um, so let's quickly just review that. So from side control, step number one, I pull my opponent onto their side, emphasizing the elbow, dropping the elbow down towards the mat. I step over, close the circuit, grab the Kimura, and by the end of the last class, I had you guys just Picking your favorite transition, right? So we can run through everything. Look for the Kimura first, pivot, look for that arm lock, falling back, right? Leg over, and from here, again, if, if I go back to the Kimura grip, I can always work this leg back underneath, kick back over the top, look for this Kimura, or go back to my step. So one, two, pulling that leg out, three, all right, bringing the leg back underneath, and back over the top, four, and back to the beginning. And someone did ask me, I think it was Sean, he's not here today, someone asked me about the Omotara. I think that was me. Oh yeah, it was <laughs> Coach Nathan. So yeah, okay, once we get comfortable, we can do other stuff like jumping over for the omopata. I don't like that. I feel like the transition's loose, but you could do that, strictly speaking. So lots of options from this position, and we were kind of just talking about all of the different things we could do. Okay. There is a triangle, yes. Uh, there's a reverse triangle. But I, more of the time, because my legs are short, I just kick back over the top. So let's quickly review that. I'll have Coach Nathan jump in. So step number one, underhook. I'm gonna go one step at a time. Pull your dummy onto the side. Good. Now, <clears throat> top leg steps over the head. Turn and look at your dummy's feet. Stop here. Now, both arms underneath the armpits, like so, and secure your Kimura. Good. And now, we're going to go, step number one, glue the arm tight to your chest, lift up, right, deadlift. We talked about deadlifting that Kimura out of there and pushing it behind our partner. So finish number one. Number two, 
without removing your leg. Simply pivot and sit on your butt. Set up for the arm walk. Good. Now, don't be like me. Don't get into the habit of removing that leg and putting it across the body. So finish the arm walk from here. Good. Now go back to your Kimura grip. We're going to talk about our other submissions now. So your arm underneath the armpit, you're going to kick that through all the way to the other side. And from here, you're going to look for your head scissor, crossing your feet, extending, all right, pressuring the head. Now, you're going to take your top leg, place it over the armpit. So over and behind the armpit. Using that leg, you're going to kick and drive back over the top for your side control kimura. Okay, and from the side control kimura, again, you don't have to let this go. Pick your dummy back up, step back over the head. Good. And that is your circuit. Okay, so kimura. Finish it. Arm lock. Pivot, arm walk, finish it. Back to your Kimura group. Good, just giving everyone a second to get back to the Kimura group. And head scissor, kick that leg through underneath and cross your feet and extend. Good, Travis, I'm not sure your dummy has a head. Um, Looks like most of you have it. Matt, try to be more on your side when you head scissor, right? Try to watch both your coaches, right? They're not flat on their back. This one works a lot better when you're on your shoulder, right? Almost side, completely sideways. Now, take the top leg off, step behind the armpit, kick over the top, and then back to the beginning, right? Back to that Kimura position, the step over. Good. I did tell you guys that Danaher calls this the dorsal Kimura, this particular position. I, yes, I guess it looks like a dorsal fin, the dorsal fin of like a fish, so, or an orca, something of that family. Finish the Kimura, take the arm walk, finish the arm walk. Go back to the Kimura, kick the leg through, look for your head scissor on your side. Matt, if you're like me and you throw that leg across the body, take it all the way back and kick it underneath your dummy's head. That would be your right leg. Your right leg, retract it, kick it underneath your dummy's head and kind of sandwich the head. Well, I'll cover that in a second. Good, we're gonna go through this one more time. Take the leg behind the armpit, kick, step your top leg behind the armpit, kick over the top, take your command. Okay. Hopefully everyone's familiar with that sequence now. I did make a mistake when I showed this with the dummy, so I'll address that right now. I am in the habit, and I have been told that this is wrong, but this is just how I do things now, um, of removing the leg. And it's on video, so I'm here, right? I made this transition. When people sit, a lot of people will tell you to keep this knee, like this back knee, my back knee is bent. So you'll see, very, very conspicuously, my foot is kind of underneath my dummy, right? I did not bring it across my dummy's belly. I don't do this in real life. Most of the time when I'm hunting this arm bar, I lean over the top and I take this leg out because it makes me feel comfortable. But it creates a lot of issues when you start to transition back. So the preference just to clean up this entire sequence is to keep that foot underneath the armpit, right underneath the shoulder. That way I can just tip over and throw this leg underneath the head. If you find that you did this and you brought the leg across the belly, that's totally fine, not the end of the world. But what you're going to have to do is you're gonna have to physically take this leg back underneath the shoulder. Okay, so I bring that knee in towards the chest and I stick that foot underneath what would be my dummy's lat or shoulder. And then I make that transition. I tip over, I take the leg underneath, I cross my feet and I extend, right? And once I'm ready to transition out of here, 
I take this leg, I kick it behind the armpit, toes over the head, take it behind the armpit, hips over the top, and here. The other point I didn't mention uh, specifically was keeping the importance of keeping this leg over the head. So if this leg comes off, it becomes easy for my partner to sit up and resist the femoris. So when you kick over, focus on driving your hip over, but keep the foot in position so this leg will block the head as your opponent attempts to sit up. And again, it's very easy for me to just drop my knee and reset the position. So, long story short, don't bring that leg across the body like that. <laughs> that's going to clean up your transition. Okay, I'm going to give you guys some time to just work through this on your own. As you get more comfortable, start to pick up the pace, but it is a closed loop, right? So you can go, you can keep cycling between your positions, starting with that step over. So step over, obtain the Kimura, turn the corner, look for the arm lock, turn to your side, look for the head scissor, and then step over, reset your belly. I was fascinated by the head scissor and its efficacy as a blue belt. Yeah. It worked really well. I guess if, if you sit over, when I go to spin this corner, and I get underneath his shoulder, yeah. whatever, or into his armpit, whatever, I'm just not going to go for yeah, the scissor lock. Yeah, you're just not going for the scissor lock. I'm go for a triangle like that. Yep. You could try it. Yeah, you could finish the arm lock. The head is still blocked. Yep, you could you could go for a triangle. And then yep. I can always do the same. I could just Yep, you could turn over the top, out. yep. And switch your hip. Good. If nothing else, this just tells you this this sequence should teach you how effective the Kimura lock is and that you should always just hang on to it. It's a lot more fun with a live partner when they give you more reactions and you realize how much control just hanging on to the Kimura offers you. But with a dummy, we can just keep cycling through this sequence. Good. As you get more comfortable, you can pick up the pace, right? Good, Travis. Extend. Head scissor. There you go, Justin. Yep. Captain Morgan. Now pivot. Okay. Thank you. There are, in all the time I've spent studying this position, there, people start to diverge on like which leg to step up on whether you keep both knees down in that position, whether you're driving forward or just hanging onto the arm. There's different ways to do it. The way I'm showing is the way I'm comfortable. So other variations aren't necessarily wrong. In fact, they might be better. If you find an explanation that says stepping up on the other leg is superior and you can explain it to me, uh, I'd be more than happy to listen. Good, Chris. Pivot around the corner. Take the arm lock. Kick that leg through. Grab your head scissor. And tie. Okay. Now, we're going to talk about what I actually planned to talk about today, which was the uh, guillotine and the darts. Now, when I think about the guillotine and the darts from side control specifically, I think about it as a very reactive submission, which doesn't make it bad, because most people 
most good people aren't going to just die and sit inside people. They're going to fight back into you. And when I think about escaping side control, I always think about the underworld. When I'm escaping side control, my favorite escape to do, I will sneak this arm in here, hell or high water, and I will start to shovel out with this underhook, right? So if, if my arm was here, right, I'd just bridge, bridge, get this hand through. And then I would start shucking over the top, I would find this leg, and I would get to my half guard, quarter guard sequence. So that is my favorite way to escape side control. What happens when I take this underhook is this act does actually expose the darts. So again, we're gonna talk about this from the other angle in a second. So Coach Nathan, going to do that side control escape that I love so much. So as Coach Nathan, again, works for this far side underhook, and he starts to get up into me, I'm starting to lose this position, right? If I give him too much time, he's going to get all the way out, he's going to turn to his knee, and I'm going to be in trouble. So as soon as I feel this underhook come in, the first thing I like to do, I take this arm, I put it over his head, and I'm going to put, I'm going to make a fist with my overhook. So some people will tell you to overhook. I find I have a lot more success making a fist and blocking the hip. That way, if he tries to come in and chase, right, I have something to slow him down. Now, I'm going to take my other arm and I'm going to use my elbow to bring his chin in towards his own chest. So I use the elbow against the back of Coach Nathan's neck and now my hand comes in I'm going to secure, because my arms are short, an S grip, okay? And I'm going to, again, start to put pressure on this arm. I'm going to look to drop my own shoulder into Coach Nathan's armpit as I get this arm through, and I'm going to feed this Darce, okay? So it is a reactive submission. You could also force this by dragging your partner onto their side, which is more so what this dummy drill is gonna look like. So, what I'm going to do for this one in particular is I'm going to actually start in this position where I've given up the underhook, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk this hand around with a chicken wing to my partner's hip, okay? So, from this position, I've given up the underhook, I'm gonna walk this arm so as I lose this underhook, I walk this arm around behind to the hip. At this point, I'm going to use my elbow pinch to drag my dummy up onto the side. This arm passes over the head. I'm going to use the elbow to pressure the head in. This feels a little weird, but that's okay. And now, again, if you have long arms, you can just feed this from here. But with me, because I'm short, I drop to my hip, I get this shoulder all the way through, and I feed this hand all the way out. Now I lock that figure four, cover the opposite shoulder, and I start squeezing either from here, or you can opt to bring your hips back and squeeze with this sort of tripod position. I've lost the underhook. I've locked my hand behind. Pull. Collapse the head. I drop to feed this arm all the way through. Lock up. Switch my hips back over the top and squeeze. Okay. There are other setups for the Dars from side control, but as I keep saying, this is probably the most common situation that I find myself feeding the Dars. So this is the one I kind of played with when I was thinking about how to teach it. Concept remains the same. I'm sure most of you have seen Tony Ferguson or at least know of him. Right? He kind of made this thing famous. He will reach for this from anywhere. He will try to feed it from the bottom of side control. Um, we're not there yet. So uh, we're feeding it from the top of side control today. Any questions? No? All right, give that a try, guys. Again, start with your dummy's arm underneath your armpit like you've given up an underhook. Oh, this one here. Yep. Now, walk that hand all the way around behind, back to the side of 
your partner's body. You're gonna pinch that elbow nice and tight and drag your dummy onto its side facing you. Okay. Walk that hand all the way through. Feed your figure four. It's easy to cheat if you don't have to watch the video. Really break it up. <clears throat> Let's see. Good. You got it, Travis. Now walk your hand. Get your hand through to the shoulder, right, all the way out, and then grab your own bicep. That'll be your left hand. You want your left hand coming out, grabbing your right bicep. Yep, use your right elbow to pressure the head. There you go. Good. That's it, Chris. Through, grab your own bicep. Lock it up. And switch your hips back over. Good. Looks like Matt's got it. I look forward to all of you coming back here and trying to do this to me when I do the underhook escape <laughs> from side control. But if you don't think I have several answers ready for this exact situation, you don't know me very well. You don't know me well. <laughs> Although this is completely viable. I got caught in this a lot when I was getting up with my underhook. I still do occasionally. Most of the time, I just opt to flight out of the doors. I think it's better than just sitting inside. Yeah. Nathan has decided to work with a higher difficulty rating. There's some uh, interference. <laughs> The nice thing about this particular variation of the guillotine is it also works just as well from the half door. This is one that leads to the anaconda. Yes, well every every dars technically leads to the anaconda. Just switch your hands. Switch the configuration of your arms. You can also use it to toss people, which is very interesting to find. Just change your lock to the middle, pull their head into your chest, and then do that little save throw. And time. I wanted to take a second to uh, explain what I was talking about when I said this exact setup works from the half guard. So if Coach Nathan's in half guard and he has an underhook, so a lot of times, hopefully everyone's familiar with the whole half guard underhook getup situation. So Coach Nathan's got an underhook. His goal is to, again, swipe my legs, start getting up, look for the knee tap, right? look for all his sweeps from here. If you get good at this particular kind of overhook dar setup, you can use this to stop the underhook from the half guard as well. So again, once I feel that my opponent has taken the underhook, this is my cue to go. I take my hand, I thread it, through to this side of my opponent's body. And I prefer to make a fist to start blocking the hip because I feel like this gives me a little more leverage to stop my opponent from getting up versus uh, the other variation, which is people will sometimes grab their gi or they'll just lift their hands super high. I feel like this isn't as effective for me, so I will block the hip. I can start reaching over the top to pressure the head, again, using my elbow to do so. And I'm going to start working my hand through in this situation, again, because my arms are short, I will grab the back of my partner's head and I will start with sort of either figure four or an S grip. And again, just working through here. I should have Coach Nathan do this to me because my arms aren't long enough to make this work. I have an underhook. Coach Nathan blocks my hip, breaks my head down, reaches through, 
and locks up the exact same choke that we just do. And from here, he doesn't have to pass the half guard even. He can just sprawl and squeeze, or drop to his hip and squeeze. Again, this has certain limitations uh, with arm length and how broad your opponent's shoulders are. There are ways to break that arm down. I can lean on it, move my head towards the underhook, and really start to break that down. We don't have time for that today. So I just took the shortcut and had the guy with long arms do it. <laughs> All the yeah. gangle limbs coming through. But uh, very useful. So we're going to wrap up with a quick round. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to combine uh, our passes with that side control submission sequence. I'll see if I can work the Dars in there as well. But uh, we'll focus on all the Kimura stuff we did just before the break. You can, because when you pull up for the Kimura, yep. we can switch the Yeah, we can switch the Dars. So I'll, I'll see if I can. Watch the brain spoke, Kathy. Knee cut pass. Lean on belly. Lean on belly arm bar. This should take you to Kimura grip. Head scissor. Sorry. Head scissor. Oh. Good. Over, back over the top. Side control Kimura. Good. Step over. North south dorsal Kimura. Finish it. Pivot. Take the arm lock. Good. Back to the scissor choke. Head scissors. The names are interchangeable. Good. Kick your legs back. North, south, Kimura. Belly down. Let's see if you can figure this one out. Kick your legs all the way behind you. North, south, Kimura. Belly down. Maybe my terminology is off. Good. Back to side control. Figure that out next time. Yeah. Good. And. Side control, knee on belly, windshield belly, jump switch, knee on belly arm bar, good, Kimura grip, Kimura grip to scissor choke, scissor choke over the top, side control Kimura, side control Kimuras, swing around, back take. We did cover this before the break. Let's see if we remember. All the way behind. Use the Kimura. That doesn't work. Good. Coach Nick got there. Thank you, Nick. Someone. Uh, I kind of like I kind of Someone remembers. Like, I think I see it. Swing around. Back control. Rear naked choke. I think I see it. Good. Palm to palm choke. Back control arm bar. Good. Arm bar switch. Arm bar switch again. Arm bar switch into the S mount. Back it up into regular mount. Back it up. Good. Just pull that knee back. Just put your knee down. Pull the knee down. Maybe. Why can't I do this here? So here. Maybe old, uh, old joints. Yeah. Lean, yeah. back it up. There we go. I'll take it. That's so good. Good. Break dancer to side control. Good. Knee on belly. Knee on chest. Back step. Other side. Oh. Step over sequence. Under hook. Pull. Step over the head. Kimura. Finish the Kimura. Take your leg behind your dummy, back take. Take both legs behind your dummy, I should say. There we go. Ah, we got it. Good. There you go, Matt. That's it. Chris, keep the Kimura group. That's the important part. That's the important part. Good. From that Kimura group, back control. Arm bar. And time. I promise we covered all of this before the break. I guess everyone's just a little bit rusty. I am, I am as well. Oh, are you trying to figure out the switch or how to back it up? 
Switch. Just just lean your weight into the into that knee and then take that leg back around. So I'm here. I'm grabbing with the top hand, right? It doesn't matter. I have never thought Are you about that. Or switch? You switch. Okay, so you're on this side, now you need to face that way. Yeah, no, so oh is it okay. that's what I'm doing. Yeah. No, the switch happens when you're sitting on your butt. Yeah, so ah, that's why. Okay, that's why. Well, but you, the part like, you were like messing me up here. Like, yeah, right. yeah, that's fine. Okay. But the confusion from the where S you got confused was like just from the S mount. You can back I'm, the S mount into the regular mount, right? Right. And where your joints are. go from there. Yeah, I was trying to switch from S mount. I'm like, okay, what? so How yeah. The heck am I doing this? <laughs> I gotta go to the arm bar. Yeah, you gotta get to the arm bar first. I need that. I need and just super Too quickly, much on the rain. we did go over the back tape. Well, we did go over the back tape, right? So this exact sequence. So if I'm using the step over sequence here, containing everything, getting to my Kimura. I don't use this one a lot, but uh, I've seen a lot of other people make use of this. So this is something I was actually trying to add to my own game. So. What you can do from here is if you swing both legs around behind your opponent, you can, keeping the arm, you can use it to take the back. Again, uh, the Danaher guys, a lot of them like to go up top, right? You can start scraping this arm off, and then from here you have triangle options, bring this leg over the top, or switching into the arm bar, looking to take the back fully. So lots of options there. I did briefly go over that before we left, but I'm not sure if everyone remembers. Again, even the coaches got a little <laughs> confused there, so clearly we didn't spend enough time on that. But that is another option as well. So lots of fun we can have with the Kimura grip. Kimura grip from north south to the back tape, I find works really well. Yep. But so I've never, I don't know if I've ever tried a history from the side there. Lots of, uh, lots of different options so definitely something that I like to do a lot and even now with my teaching I like to teach stuff that I do because it's stuff that I'm comfortable explaining and it's stuff that I know for a fact works rather than you know watching an instructional off YouTube and paraphrasing it or watching some high-level black belt and trying to paraphrase what I got from them this is the sort of stuff that I like to do all the time. So hopefully you guys can find a use for that. But uh, we'll keep going over various different options. We'll spend a little more time on the Dars, and we will cover something that Coach Nick alluded to, which is transitioning from the Dars to your other arm triangle variations, so arm and guillotine, the anaconda. It's just a matter of switching your hands. So we'll start going over that, and that'll be your new sequence. Okay. Make sure you guys dummies are dressed in a gi going forward um, rather than like a no gi version because if we want to teach you loop chokes or anything like that you can't redo it if you're like these dummies aren't wearing a gi right there are other ones on the side that have a gi but just try to make sure your dummy is dressed in a gi so if you do those kinds of chokes you'll be able to do it on your dummy everybody has a gi there's no one here that doesn't have a gi so just take your gi and put it on your dummy right. some of you aren't even wearing gis right now if you have two gis even better Sometimes there's a sequence that I wanted to show you, but I'll probably wait for a couple of weeks before I show it to you. We might be back in, actually. I don't even know by next week. Maybe. But regardless, like there's some chokes that involve your own gi, so you'll be looping your ah, yes. a loop choke with, you know, around your opponent, but using your own gi to choke them out. So if you have two gis, even better, dress your dummy in one gi and have your gi. Questions, if you have questions, you can unmute and ask. Questions, questions concerns. Crickets. <clears throat> well, they've probably mastered everything. Yeah, great. They know great. everything. They're all black belts on this. I look forward to everyone trying to darse me from my underhook when I come back, or when you guys are back. All right, if there's no questions. Well, Chris I'm unmuted, so. Oh, Chris has a question. So, in the DOS, the hand that is not cupping the bicep, the other hand, yeah. are you grabbing the lat or the shoulder there with this hand? 
I'm not prioritizing grabbing anything. I'm more focused on using my elbow as a lever to affect his head. So if this is my, we'll call this the choking hand. For reference, we'll call this arm that's currently overhooking the choking hand, and we'll refer to this as the support hand. My support hand, as I'm setting this up, I'm not really focused on grabbing anything. I'm more focused on just using my elbow against the crown of his head. I can do this whether I'm grabbed onto something or not, but I'm really focused on using my elbow to collapse his head, so try to bring your head back up, right? Versus if I grab something and my elbow is out of position, he moves his head, uh, it's not great for me. So you can grab onto something, but I have like short gremlin arms, so I'm not even worried about grabbing stuff most of the time. I'm just trying to beat the guy's head with my elbow, right? I'm just trying to abuse the guy's head with my elbow. And I find myself focusing more on that than where my hand is in particular. You're, are you talking about after the lockup? Like for the finish, Chris, or? Yeah, like once you've actually got the cup on the bottom. Oh, once finish. you've locked it in. So there's two, two philosophies here. I'm not actually sure which one is tighter, but once I've got the lockup, I reach as far as I can. But some people will tell you to cup actually this top shoulder, the shoulder that you have trapped to tighten this. So there, or you can just place your hand along the spine. So both work, but I find, I do feel it is a little tighter when I walk this up and cover the trapped shoulder. So here. not sure if that- As soon as you grab my shoulder, it's tighter. Okay, so it is tighter. So grab the shoulder. Yeah. Or grabbing something up there. Grab something. Okay. You don't have to actually physically grab anything. Just reach your hand up. Reach I'm your holidays. <laughs> holidays, holidays were great. How were your holidays? Keep it going. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's good. <laughs> holidays are always good, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Did you do anything special? Tell them. I do. All right, please keep that. Tell them what you said. I missed them. Yeah, you missed you miss those. We miss these guys. Ah, uh, we miss you too. <laughs> Just tell your dad to move back to Calgary. Yeah, time to come home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well done, everyone. Uh, hopefully everyone had a uh, good, uh, nice little break, spent some time with the family. Um, but yeah, we'll see you guys on Wednesday. Kickboxing tomorrow, right? Yep. yep. So Coach Nathan's running that one, so show up for that. Be there, be square. All right, that's Cheers, it. Bob. No, I never yeah. make this class bow. Just... Right, everybody up. Let's All right. Out. Bow. Yeah, always do. Dad's back. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The no. parents are back. <laughs> All right, we bow out now. Us. Us. All right, guys. Yeah. All right, guys. It's Monday. See you guys Wednesday or tomorrow. So bring in some extra keys for these guys then, I guess. We have. There are. Oh.